In this video, I'm going to show you how quickly and easily you can create a multilingual chatbot using Microsoft Translator. Uh, be sure to check out the blog post. The, the link is in the description that has links to all the resources that we use in this blog and also links to the REST API uh, for using Microsoft Translator if you actually want to write code to use Microsoft Translator. But in this video example, I'm going to show you how you can do it uh, without writing any code whatsoever. So let's just jump in and get started. Here I am in my Azure portal and I am going to create a resource for our translator. So simply click on create a resource, search for translator, and let's create that. So from there, choose your subscription, choose your resource group or create a new one, uh, choose your resource region. Uh, please note it says, please choose the global region unless your business or application requires a specific region. So I am going to follow directions and choose global. Let's give it a name. We'll call it Paintbot Translator and choose the pricing tier. And you can see that for the free pricing tier, we get up to 2 million characters translated per month. Uh, that's a good number to get started with. And then you can go up to the page as you want to. Um, again, be careful with pricing. Uh, some of the, more, the higher tiers are pretty expensive, so keep an eye on that as you're spending. Don't go crazy with this stuff without realizing how much you're going to need to spend first. So let's choose that free tier and let's review and create. And we'll create it. So once the deployment is complete, we can go to that resource and look at it. And what we need for our uh, bot is we're going to need the key to, to get to that bot. So click on keys and endpoint and then you can show the keys and see what these keys are. So remember this location, remember how to get here because we're going to need this key uh, imminently. If you are a developer, here is the endpoint that you would use to actually call this with code. And again, you would use these keys as well when you're calling the code for the Microsoft Translator. So now that we've created the resource, let's go over to our bot. And for our bot, we're going to use our Power Virtual Agent in Microsoft Teams that we created in our last video. Now again, you don't have to use Power Virtual Agents in Teams. You can use this uh, resource you know, with anything, if you're writing code, almost with anything whatsoever. Uh, but this really does show you how quickly and easily you can use Translator um, without writing any code. We've already got the bot created from the past video, so we're just going to keep using what we already have. So we're in our bot. We're going to go to our topics and we are going to go to the fallback topic that we created uh, in the last blog post and go to that authoring canvas. Now we're going to go to our flow that we used and for a quick recap of what that flow does, let's take a look at it. So in the flow that we created in our previous video and blog post, the user asks a question of the Power Virtual Agent. The Power Virtual Agent sends that question to Lewis, where Lewis determines the intent of the question that the person was asking and then we query a SharePoint list to say hey what is the response that we want to show the user for this intent we store that response in a variable and then we return it back to the user so what we want to do is we want to put Microsoft Translator within this flow so that it will translate the question and the response for the user so the first thing we need to do though is we need to know what language is the user asking the question in because we want to make this bot work for any language. So let's insert an action and let's do a search for translator. And here we see Microsoft Translator. And what we want to do is we want to detect language. We want to detect which language they're asking. Now the first time you use uh, the translator, it's going to ask you for a connection. So let's go ahead and set up a new connection so you guys can see what that looks like. It's going to ask you for a connection name. We'll call this Pate. Translator and now it's asking for the subscription key. That is where we go to back to our uh, Azure resource and we go to our key and we copy that and we paste that into the subscription key and create that connection. So now it's asking us for the text to translate and that text is going to be the question that comes from Power Virtual Agents. So now what this is going to do is it's going to detect that language for us. So let's go ahead and store that language that was detected in a variable. So let's initialize a variable. 
we will call it language. It's going to be a string and the initial value will be language code. Okay, so we've now retrieved the language that was detected by translator and we've stored it in the variable. The next thing we want to do is we want to translate the text of the person of the question that was asked. So let's add another action. And it's going to be again using translator and we want to translate text. So it's asking us our target language. The target language is going to be English because we're using Lewis and we're using our response in SharePoint and all those languages, all that information is stored in English. So our target language needs to be English. But look at all these languages you have to choose from. I mean, so many languages. You can even use Klingon. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just really endless what you can choose. So we're choosing English for our target language. The text to translate, again, is going to be the question that was entered. So now that we're translating that question to English, we need to update our call to Lewis to pass in the text of the translated text. So what's happening now is someone asks a question. We're detecting the language they asked it in and storing that in a variable. Then we're translating their question into English and sending that question to Lewis to get the prediction. So the response is going to come back from Lewis. It's going to come back with a response from the SharePoint list. We're going to store that response into a variable. And now we need to actually translate that variable back into the language the person asked the question. So what we want to do is we want to add another action. Again, it's going to be using translator. And we're going to again be translating text. It's asking us for our target language. So our target language now, we want to come down here and specify a custom value. And we want to use the language that we stored in the variable. And the text that we want to translate is going to be what we stored in our response variable. And now when we return to our Power Virtual Agent, we want to return the translated text that came from that second text translation. And that's all there is to it. So once again, briefly, person asks a question, we detect which language it was asked in, we then translate the text to English, send the translated text to Lewis, Lewis gets the response from the SharePoint, Lewis gives us the intent, then we query the SharePoint list to get the response, and then we translate the response back into the te detected language that the user asked it in and present that to the user. So we can save this, close it, and it's ready for us to test. So let's let's ask it a question. One of the what one of the questions we asked before. Uh, what does Pate stand for? And this is in English. Response come back comes back in in English. So let's try it in a different language. So I don't speak any other languages because I'm an ignorant American. So let's just do a quick translate. Do a search for a translator here. So we want to ask the question in English and we want to get the response in what about Czech? So here's how you ask what does Pate stand for in Czech. So let's copy that, bring it back over into our bot and ask it in Czech. And we get a response. I absolutely cannot read that. But what I can do is I can take it back to our translator and the language is going to be Czech and we want to translate it to English. So you can see the translation was really accurate for going between languages. So let's let's ask something else just so you show you so you can see it's working. Let's choose uh, how about Korean. This has got a weird character set. So we want to ask let me ask a question. Let's see. What is... Tell me a joke. And we want to translate that to Korean. And that's what that looks like in Korean. Tell me a joke. So let's copy that. Put it in our bot. See what kind of response we get. There's our response. Again, I cannot read that, but let's take it to our translator where you want to translate from Korean to English. 
And translation, why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, it would be a bagel. Right? So again, the translation works really well uh, between all of those languages. So theoretically, if you've got a uh, knowledge base with questions and answers, you can immediately have a fully multilingual chatbot for everybody in your organization, no matter what language they speak. So this is really cool to play with. Feel free to, to play with this, deploy it, let your users do stuff with it. Um, do be careful of the cost, though, if you step out of the free service. Again, you can use the REST API and implement Translator into your applications. I do have an example SharePoint framework function call to the Microsoft Translator in the blog post corresponding to this video. Quick, easy, hope it piques your interest in creating one of these and using Microsoft Translator. Thanks a lot.